Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today I'll be going over this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's Problem of the Week, Advanced Problem of the Week, asks you to find this, this quantity, A inverse B, all inverse, all transpose, when given these two matrices, A and B. So this looks like a really ugly problem. If we just did this as is, we, had, we have to take lots of, lots of inverses, and finding the inverse, unless you have a calculator of a 3 by 3 matrix, takes a while because you have to do Gaussian elimination. So you want to have to find the inverse as few times as possible. So in order to do so, we're going to use the properties of matrix, matrix inverses to simplify this quantity in here. So we know interior quantity A inverse B, all inverse by the properties of the matrix inverse, this is going to be equal to B inverse times quantity A inverse inverse. And as we know, this is just equal to A, and the inverse of A inverse is just going to be A. Okay, great. So it looks like we're only going to have to find one single matrix inverse, which is what we want. So we need to find B inverse. So we have B, and we know that there is this property for matrix inverses, if you're going to do them by hand, that we can set here, we have we can set B, and we can augment it with the 3 by 3 identity matrix. And we can do perform Gauss-Jordan elimination on this to transform this into the 3 by 3 identity matrix on the left-hand side of the augmented matrix, and B inverse on the right-hand side. And this here is the quantity that we that we want. We want B inverse. So now we're going to set up the augmented matrix as follows. So we set B on the left hand side. 3, 5, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 6, 7, and then it's not necessary to draw this bar here, but I think I think it helps delineate between the quantity that you're trying to, to get the inverse of over here. So I'm going to leave it in there. So we have the 3 by 3 identity matrix on the right hand side. Okay, so now we need to perform Gauss elimination to get, we want the inverse on the left-hand side. So first, and be, be careful when you're doing Gaussian elimination, it's so easy to make algebraic mistakes that can script your entire answer. So um, here I'm just, especially when you're dealing with all of these, when you're dealing with this and this and all of this over here. So it's important to just make sure that you're being very careful with your algebra because uh, it's very easy, I know from experience, to get completely sidetracked by a simple algebraic mistake. So first I'm going to switch these two rows, the second row and the first row, because we want, we can see here that we can have a leading one without dividing by anything by just switching these rows. So we just switch those rows there. Make sure to also switch these rows over here. So we got 3, 5, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then this last row just stays the same. Okay, so I'm going to bring this up here now. Okay, so now it looks like our best bet is going to be to subtract because we want to get rid of the 3 and the 2 here. So we're going to subtract 3 from the second row, 3 times the first row, and from the third row we're going to subtract 2 times the first row. And that is going to end up giving us The top row stays constant, so we have 1, 2, 1, augmented with 0, 1, 0. And then we have in the second row, 0, negative 1, negative 2, 1, negative 3, and 0, 0, 2, 5, and 0, negative 2, 1. Okay, so now we want to clear out the second row to get at the leading one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract off the third row from the first row to clear this out in here. And I'm going to multiply the second row by negative 1 because we have here our, our leading one. We just need to multiply everything by negative 1. So what we're going to get here is going to be 1, 0, negative 4, augmented with 0, 3, negative 1. And then in the second row, we just have 0, 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 0. And then the final row stays the same. So we have 0, 2, 5, 0, negative 2, and 1 there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from the third row two times the second row in order to clear out this 2 here to get our, this leading one in a column by itself. So 
the top row stays the same. So you're negative one over here. And then the second row, the second row is also going to stay the same, only performing an operation on the third row. And notice that we are doing only, um, performing only elementary row operations here, so everything we're doing is still technically totally fine. Okay, so we're going to get zero, zero, negative one, and then the bottom row, two, negative eight, and one. Okay. So we're almost there, we just need to clear out the final column in order to get the left-hand side of the augmented matrix into reduced row echelon form. Okay, so now what I'm going to do from the second row is I'm going to subtract two times the third row, and from the first row I'm going to add four times the last row. As you can see here, just trying to ma manipulate that one such that we can clear that final column there. And we're going to end up getting Finally, the identity matrix on the left-hand side. So we have 1, 0, 0. And then we're going to have 8, negative 29, 3. In the second row, we have 0, 1, 0, negative 5, 19, and negative 2. And then the final row, we have 0, 0, 1. So we complete the identity matrix on the left-hand side. And we have 2, negative 8, and 1. Okay, so now we know that B inverse... I'll rewrite this here for clarity. The inverse is going to be equal to 8 times negative 29 times 3, or not times, in the top row, 8, negative 29, 3, negative 5, 19, negative 2, 2, negative 8, and 1. So now, what we need to do, if you recall, is we need to multiply B inverse by A, and then finally take the transpose of that. So we multiply B inverse times A, and that is going to be equal to all of this here, 8, negative 29, 3, negative 5, 19, negative 2, 2, negative 8, 1. Just erase all this here. Oops. This is a 4 here, 4, 1, 1 in the bottom row. Okay, so we're going to multiply this by A. So we just copy down the A matrix from up there. So we have 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, 1, and 4, 1, 1. Okay, so now if you, if you do this, I'm going to snake this up around here. Okay, so now if you multiply out this, we have here a 3 by 3 matrix. And we're multiplying it by another 3 by 3 matrix. So our resultant matrix the matrix multiplication is defined between these two matrices, and our resultant matrix is also going to be a 3 by 3 matrix. So if we multiply all this out here, we're going to get B inverse times A is all equal to negative 67, 19, negative 26, and in the second row we have 44, negative 12, 17, and then the last row, negative 18, 5, and negative 7. Okay, great. So this is easiest to perform with your calculator. You can do, it, you can do this by hand, but you can also use your calculator to try to eliminate any, minimize any potential algebra mistakes that would be made along the way. And I know that I made a lot, as I always do, with um, matrices. Okay, so finally, we have to take, we've now solved for the interior quantity B inverse times A which as we simplify this interior quantity here, this is equal to that. So now finally we just have to find the transpose of this resultant matrix. So we know B inverse A transpose, which equals, again, as the problem is asking, A inverse B inverse transpose. We just take the transpose of this matrix, which is going to be negative, six, negative 67, excuse me, negative 67. 44, negative 18. Second row is going to be 19, negative 12, and 5. And the final row is going to be negative 26, 17, and negative 7. Okay, so now we've solved for what the problem is asking us to do. We simplified, we began by simplifying the interior quantity. So we didn't, because otherwise we would have had to take two separate, do, done the inverse, 
multiplied it, taking another inverse, and then taking the transpose. But instead, using properties of the matrix inverse, we simplified this quantity in here to be B inverse times A, and then we just took the transpose of that after finding the inverse, doing the matrix multiplication. And then we took the transpose to get our final answer here, which is the solution to this week's advanced problem of the week. So for more problem of the week videos, you can see our playlist here. To subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, you can click here. And to visit us at centerofmath.org, you can click this link here. Thank you for watching.